us. We've been looking at the theme. This is us this week, Pastor Smith. Yes. Pastor Smith. How Don't call me Pastor Smith. <laughs> there's too many of them. That's okay? true. There's That's Ida. True. Fine. There's Chantel. Mm, okay. There's like, I have to be unique. Jordan. Fair. Jordan. Okay. Okay. I thought we were just playing on the this is us. There's oh, so many of you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I guess. Us. <laughs> all of us. All of the Pastor Smiths. Yes. Go ahead. How have you been feeling about camp meeting this week? I've been feeling great about camp meeting mm -hmm. this week. I'm really enjoying the sermons. I'm really enjoying connecting with you guys in our live chat playback. And I'm really enjoying seeing you guys and interacting with you guys and having prizes on Instagram. Don't forget, the grand prize is coming up at the end of the week. How much is it? A thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. A thousand doll hairs. Like, <laughs> not doll hairs, real dollars. <laughs> you don't want to miss out on that. So make sure that you're following us on Instagram at We Ignite Lacombe and Berman University. And tonight we have another speaker. Yes, actually, a good friend of mine again. Pastor Jose Sanchez. We came to Berman together. And honestly, guys, Jose was one of the most powerful speakers in my class. I'll never forget this one wise where he preached on Friday and so many people gave their lives to Jesus because of his ministry. I don't know Jose very personally, but I do listen to his podcast. Well, he does it with about four other guys called yeah. the Prayer Room Podcast. So make sure you listen to that sometime. Check them out on Instagram and follow them wherever you listen to your podcasts. Uh, they started here at Berman University. They I believe, did. In the, in the chapel? In the chatterbox, the actually. Chatterbox, yeah. Sometimes I would like, whenever I'd wake up, <laughs> at six o'clock in the morning, I would go. <laughs> and then like whenever I wasn't like eating at lunchtime, I would go. Mm -hmm. But you know, like they were very, I loved Jesus <laughs> at different times. Okay. <laughs> but now that it's on Instagram, mm -hmm. I'm going to be there. Yeah. So follow them on Instagram. <laughs> uh, follow Pastor Jose on all of his social media platforms because he's really powerful. But I'm really glad that you guys are going to have an opportunity to hear him speak today. Take it away. I told you guys earlier this week that I like plants. However, I think I was a little bit dishonest about how much I love plants. I am bordering on being that crazy plant lady whose apartment looks more like a forest than somewhere that exists in central Alberta. I love plants and is it expensive? to buy plants, yes. Is it expensive to buy grow lights and turn them on to keep your plants alive in the winter? Yes. Is it expensive to water plants? Yes. But the more I take care of my plants, the more enjoyment I get from my plants. They give me oxygen and make the air quality in my apartment better. They have antidepressant qualities. It's wonderful to wake up to a green space in the middle of winter, and they add more joy to my life. The more I take care of my plants, the more they take care of me. But it's also true of community. Is it expensive in terms of time to invest in our community? Absolutely. And sometimes it's expensive in terms of money and resources and effort, especially when we might be tired after a long day of work and just feel like we need to relax. But the more we invest in our community, in our family, in our friends, in our churches, in the areas where we live, the more beautiful our communities become and the more they give back to us. Thee, created me, 
Jose Daniel Sanchez, and I feel excited and also honored to be able to be your speaker for today. I want to take this time to thank Pastor Lyle Notis for thinking about me and extending the invitation, and I also want to thank you for choosing to be here today. I say that because in 
In the year plus that has passed, it seems that we have been bombarded by the internet. Most, if not all of our activities have transitioned to be online. We spend hours in front of screens because we have to. But now you are choosing to be part of this worship experience that the Alberta Conference has put together specially for you. You know, Alberta holds a very special place in my heart. Uh, I experience a lot of great things in this amazing place. I went to school in Alberta. I went to Berman University, which is my alma mater. It's a place that is extremely special to me. I met some of my closest friends at Berman University and also some of the coolest people that I know. And to put the cherry on top in Alberta, I met and also got married to my beautiful wife, Laura Angelica Sanchez. It couldn't get better than that. Alberta truly holds a special place in my heart. Before we get into the message today, know that I have been praying for you, that God will speak to your current condition and work a transformative change in your life today. So it is with this in mind that I once again want to recognize that God is at work right now and He's about to speak to you. So join me as we have a word of prayer. Dear God, it is a blessing to be in your presence. I want to thank you for this opportunity that you gave to me to speak to whoever is listening right now. I pray that you will speak to their hearts. And God, our response or our expectation is just like Samuel when he said, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So speak to us, Lord, today. It's our desire. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. See, I love the Bible. And I love the central message of Scripture. It is one of a God who refuses to lose those whom he loves. It is not a secret to anybody that the entrance of sin into our world affected humanity and all of the creation, bringing pain and brokenness. But it is in this scenario where we find God sending His Son, Jesus Christ, and through what He did on the cross, life can now spread to all. A pastor put it this way. He said that the narrative of salvation is not God saying, accept Jesus or I will kill you. It's actually God saying, you are already dead and I want to give you life. So God is not threatening anyone with death. We are already in its grip, but Jesus offers a way out. And in him, we can regain the life that was ours to begin with. Now, I want you to pay close attention to what I am about to say because it is essential for the rest of the message, okay? So pay close attention. Do not let anything distract you. Here we go. Today, God is actively working to bring salvation to everybody and to restore the world to himself. And this is where you and I come into place. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life and by faith you let him come in to sit in the throne of your heart, I want to let you know that you are automatically choosing to be a part of his team. You are choosing to become part of something that is bigger than yourself because what Jesus did on the cross for you goes beyond the forgiveness of your sins. But it involves a complete restoration as he leads you into his story to be an active player in his team. And I like to picture God handing each player, each person that has allowed him in. I like him. I like to picture him giving us the team's jersey. And right here, I have one of the most beautiful jerseys that anybody can owe in the entire world. Look at this. This right here is my country's soccer's national soccer jersey. Unfortunately, I cannot say that this jersey right here is of one of the best teams in the world, but it's definitely one of the most 
exciting teams to watch. This right here is Venezuela's national soccer team, a.k.a. La Vino Tinto. Que viva! Que viva! <laughs> so, when you accept the Lord Jesus as the Lord of your life, He hands you the jersey. You do not have to try out for this team. The team is open for anybody who wants to join. But there is something peculiar about this team. Unlike an official soccer team that has 11 players in the game plus the bench, in Jesus' team there is no bench and no subs. Every player has their place and their role. The goal is um, the goal of Christ's team is not to win the South American Cup or the World Cup. But the goal of his team is to carry the good news of salvation to the world and call people back to him. Before we open scripture, I'm going to put on the team's jersey before we continue because this is getting extremely exciting. Let me put on the jersey really quick. And as I'm putting on the jersey, I want to invite you to Open your Bibles and go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 to 21. Really quick. All right. One of the most beautiful jerseys in the entire world. Okay. So we're going to read 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 to 21. One. Okay, I think that we're ready to go. Remember this team. We're going to go far in the South American Cup, which is actually taking place very soon in June. So remember La Vino Tinto, okay? Anyways, so 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 to 21. And this is what Scripture says. This means... That anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. This is what happens when you come to Jesus. Your old life is gone and a new one begins. It continues. And all of this is a gift from God. Who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to Him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And He gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. Let me use the New Hosea's translation. Yes, I like to make the Bible for myself. I like to embrace it. I like it to speak to me. I like to translate it with my own words. This is a New Hosea's translation. Basically, what Scripture is saying is this. So we are part of Christ's team. So we are Christ's ambassadors, says the New Living Translation. My version says, so we are part of Christ's team. God is making His appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead with other people, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. As we continue to look into Jesus' team, I want us to look at an unusual picture that the Bible uses to explain the dynamics of this team. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 20, we find this unusual picture. Here the Bible talks about the reality that in Christ's team, there is one team, one body, but this body has many different parts. And, and we could not get a better picture than this because we are all familiar with it. A body. Though a body is made of many parts, it is still one. About this, a pastor that I really enjoy listening to, his name is David Asterick. 
he, he spoke about this idea and he said this, that the body or the church, I like to call it the church FC, the church football club, this body expresses both diversity and unity. So in this team, there is a diversity of roles, but there is unity of purpose. Let me repeat that one more time. There is diversity of roles in our team, in Christ's team, but there is unity of purpose. So in Jesus' team, we have a goal to reach as a team, but in accomplishing that goal, we have a diversity of roles, just like in any sports team. I love that idea as it highlights God's creative mind. When God created you, he made you extremely special and unique. When he looks at you, when he sees your singularity, the fact that there is nobody else in the universe just like you, I can just imagine him saying, man, he and she, they're so amazing. They're so beautiful. Like God actually delights when he looks at you and he sees you. He celebrates and delights in his creative work in you. Just like a musician who has worked on a song and, and when it is finished, he or she listens to it uh, and they say, wow, it is just great. It is exactly what I envision. It's the same thing when God sees you in your singularity. Now, now that we know that when we receive Christ and we become part of his team and that in his team, every player has a diverse role to play in the team's main goal. I want you to know that when God made you, he placed in your sports bag gifts or tools that you can use to help the fulfillment of the team's goal. I want to show you something really quick. In the book of 1 Peter, Chapter 4, verses 10 and 11, we read the following. Follow, follow with me really quick here in Scripture. 1 Peter, chapter, chapter 4, verses 10 to 11. This is what the Bible says. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well. To serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything that you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Verse 10 once again reminds us that God has given each one of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. So Peter here is not saying that God gave a gift only to some or, or to a, a very few. No. Do not devalue what God says about you with the words, I got nothing to offer. And careful also with thinking the opposite, that you got it all. No. No. You're not the team. You are one of the players. It, it, it's possible that as you hear this message, you are saying to yourself, man, I'm ready. I'm motivated. This is what Pastor Lau asked me to do. Motivate the young people of Alberta. And this is exactly what I'm trying to do. But though you may be saying that you are ready, you may not know what your role is in this team effort. Or maybe at one point in your life you were actively involved, but you lost your passion and, and, and this feeling just left you, this, this desire to serve because maybe you didn't fit the patterns that were given or expected of you by others. If that is your case, I want you to know that God understands exactly why you feel that way and you are in the right to experience what you're feeling if you are currently in this condition. And hear me out. I want you to understand this. 
We mentioned before that God made you unique. That He celebrates His creative work in you. I want you to, to listen to what one of my favorite books in the Bible says about this created, creative work of God making humans. The book of Psalm, Psalm 139, verses 15 and 16, say the following. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Right here, this is David reflecting and and just meditating on on what God did in him when when he made him. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life, was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. You are the original you. And the content that God placed in you when he formed you in your mother's womb is a special singular package. It is like when you are packing for a trip. Imagine if I say, I got plane tickets for everybody. Tomorrow we are going to Mexico. I know that though we are all going to the same place, I'm pretty sure that our suitcases would look very differently. For example, I'm sure that my suitcase would contain uh, things like, I'm sure that I would take my soccer shoes. I would take some shorts. I would take uh, maybe, let me see. I would take a, a, a soccer ball. I think so. I will take my my, my soccer ball, maybe a pump. Uh, I would take my Bible, of course. I would take a Frisbee. I'm sure that I would take a Frisbee. I would probably take a volleyball too. Uh, But if you look at somebody else's suitcase, for example, my, I would say my wife, my wife would probably take um, some things to draw, some things to work in art. Uh, She would take, um, she's giving me uh, (laughs) signals here. She's telling me that she would probably take some uh, things to do her nails, uh, some creams. Maybe somebody else's suitcase would contain uh, cameras, GoPros, uh, drones. So every suitcase, though we're going to the same place, I'm sure that it would look different. What if? When we get to Mexico, I grab a suitcase that wasn't mine. And when I open it at the hotel, I find two-piece bathing suits, floral dresses, and magazines. Oh, you can be sure that I would do anything in my power to find my suitcase. Even if it was uh, some other guy's suitcase. Some may say, ah, you can manage with another guy's suitcase. But the reality is this, that nobody wants to live off somebody else's suitcase. But many people are doing it today. You find this everywhere. God never called you to be someone else. He calls you to be the best version of yourself. If you live according to the tools that God placed in you, you will find incredible joy and will thrive in your role in Jesus' team. The question is, what is your place? What is your role in this team effort? Max Lucado, in his book, Cure for the Common Life, shares that the key to finding out what your gifts or your tools are is to open your backpack and see what your story tells you. Story being an acronym of five questions to help you discover what your place is in this amazing yet privileged work of being co-laborers with God in the salvation of humanity. So I'm going to give you those five questions really quick. So find a pen, find a piece of paper, and start writing this down because I'm giving you practical things that will help you to find out what your role is in Jesus' team. Number one, what are your strengths? You and I normally engage in our strengths very frequently 
and without apparent effort. Some people can make a piece of art out of junk. Others are great at planning. Others are great at making sure that things run smoothly. Others can interact with people and make them feel like they belong. It is truly amazing to see somebody operate in their area of strength. A good question to ask is, what gift do I perform with fair ease that does not come as easy to others? Singing, bringing people together and get them excited for something. Maybe photography, editing, playing a sport, reading, public speaking, etc., etc., etc. What are your strengths? Number two, what is your theme? What is your theme? This refers to the things that you like to work with. Children, animals, instruments. God plants these passions in you, these things that you like to work with. Look at what God says about Bezalel in Exodus 31. I love this. I came across this not too long ago, and this is truly amazing. Look at what God says about Bezalel. And this is found in Exodus 31, verses 3. It says, I have filled him with the Spirit of God, giving him great wisdom, ability, and expertise in all kinds of crafts. He is a master craftsman, expert in working with gold, silver, and bronze. He is skilled in engraving and mounting gemstones and in carving wood. He is a master at every craft. I love that so much. It sounds like God is proud and celebrates what he has placed in Bezalel. So that is point number two. Point number three, what are your optimal conditions? What are the things that move you to action? Some people tend to respond to an emergency, an unexpected event, a problem, a need. So that's number three. What are your optimal conditions? Number four. Number four, how are your relationships? Think about a time when you felt fulfilled in what you were doing. How did your circle of relationships look like at that time? Some people need to be part of a big group that works together. Others do better in smaller groups. There is also another group that that need to be part of a group, but they need to lead it because leadership is part of what God has placed in them. This is so important to identify, guys, because imagine someone who was created to operate in a big group setting, but finds themselves behind a computer. Or someone who thrives in smaller groups, uh, but, but, but their gift is not being used to its fullest potential because of where they have been placed. Ask yourself the question, which of these three fits me best? Once you have this answered, the last question to ask yourself is, what is it that leads me to say, yes, I did it? That's number five. This is the place where I desire each one of you to be. Because regardless of how much a dolphin moves its fins, it will never fly. Some of us have been flapping our fins for way too long trying to do things that we weren't created to do. Maybe your leaders or your heroes fly because they're birds. But do not feel bad, guilty, or discouraged when you can't catch any air. It is time to stop trying to be like somebody else. God did not make you to be like someone else. They have their role in the team and you have your role in the team. They fly and God celebrates that. You swim and do cool tricks in the water, God celebrates that as well. This is the place where your strengths, your theme, your optimal conditions and your relationships meet and lead you to say, yes, I did it. Family, my invitation is that you let Jesus come in and sit in the throne of your heart allowing His presence to permeate every single area of your life. I also invite you to embrace what God has given you and what He says about you. 
God placed something extremely special in you and He wants you to use it to be a blessing to many. Today He is inviting you, come and join my team. My question is, will you accept His invitation? Will you place the tools that God positioned in your life when He formed you to be used for the team's overall goal of sharing the good news of salvation, inviting people to come back to God? It is my prayer that you do. Because the more of you that respond to this invitation, the stronger we will be in accomplishing the team's goal. We are stronger together. Let us pray. God, I thank you for speaking to us through your word. God, it is possible that somebody who is listening has been trying to copy somebody else, has been comparing themselves to other people, has been trying to follow the patterns that they have been pleased in, but maybe that's not what you created them for. Maybe that's not their role in your team. I pray, God, that each one of us would be intentional about finding out what our role is so that we can thrive and truly fulfill the role for which we were created. Thank you, God, once again for speaking to our hearts. And I pray that this seed of the Word of God will be planted in our hearts and our minds for eternity. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you. That was powerful. Thank you, Pastor Jose. I told you it was going to be powerful. <laughs> it was. It was. I didn't doubt that, Jose, just so we're clear. <laughs> we appreciate your commitment to the word and just how much you divided the word of truth tonight. Thank you. And all of you who are here with us for the entire week, don't forget to continue connecting with us. We have so many prizes. We got t-shirts. We have other things that we're going to get from the youth department. Right, Lyle? <laughs> and we want to give those prizes to you and engage with you as though we were in person. Mm -hmm. So let's have a word of prayer and then we'll see you tomorrow. Heavenly Father, thank you for being our God. Thank you for accepting us even in the moments when we feel unacceptable. I pray that as we leave this virtual space, that the word that we've received today will go with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.